It's time to make it Just give it a try Cause you can make it Like the old fat guy Welcome to another episode of You Can Make It with David Farrell, the old fat guy. Today I'm going to make something that's great to do in the late summer and early fall, and that's use all the fresh vegetables that are available to make salsa. Now, I'm going to make my own version of salsa, which is old fat guy or OFG salsa, and it really is very easy to make. The only hard part of making salsa is all the chopping. You got to chop lots of tomatoes, you got to chop lots of peppers, onions. Now some people just cut them in chunks and throw them in a fruit processor and give them a few pulses. It works, but I find it, I don't like the textures much. I like the nice cubed stuff up, so I do it all by hand. You're not going to have to watch me chop everything. I did it before I got here. I'm just going to show you how to make the salsa with the chopped vegetables. Now the ingredients for salsa are pretty standard, but you need to know that salsa is just Spanish for sauce. So if you go to Mexico, you're going to get a totally different taste. It's going to be all kinds of different things because it just means sauce. This is a North American style sauce that, salsa that we're used to. Now the ingredients all just get put into a big pot and brought to a boil. Now I like to use my big electric skillet here because it sort of keeps control of the temperature for me. But just a big pot on the stove will work well too. Now we're going to start off with 1500 milliliters or six cups of coarsely chopped tomatoes. Now you can use canned diced tomatoes, but they're a little more liquid and you'll have to boil your tomatoes and salsa longer to get a good consistency. But these are hand chopped fresh tomatoes, 1500 milliliters or six cups. We'll put them in and then sweet peppers. Now you can use green peppers, red peppers, yellow peppers, whatever you've got. I like to use a mixture because that adds more color to my salsa. And what I have here is 1200 milliliters or about uh, four, close to five cups. So just under five cups of sweet peppers, all diced up. And then, of course, salsa generally is a little spicy, so I've added some jalapeno. And what I did was I took 257 grams, or about half a pound of jalapenos, Cut the tops off, took the seeds and membranes out, and then chopped them up. And that left me with a little over a cup, or 250 milliliters, of chopped jalapeno. And we'll just add that. And then we need 500 milliliters, or two cups, of chopped onion. We'll just throw that into the mix. Now, I have a little secret ingredient I'm trying here, and like myself, and that is rhubarb. I just put a cup and a half or 375 milliliters of chopped rhubarb in. I find it gives it a taste that you can't quite pick out, but I like. So we'll add that to it. Then you need some tart in your salsa. So what I have here is 500 milliliters or two cups of cider vinegar. And to kick up the tomato flavor a bit, I use tomato paste. And I have a 156 milliliter can, which is about five ounces of tomato paste. So we'll just put the tomato paste in to the salsa. There we go. Now you need some seasonings and spices to make salsa. So what I have here are four cloves of garlic all chopped up. I have 30 milliliters of uh, sugar. I have 15 milliliters of kosher salt. I have 10 milliliters of paprika and 5 milliliters of oregano. And I'll just scrape all that in there. And I got a little bit of the tomato salsa there, so I'll put that in. Okay. So, now that we've got it all in the pot, that's everything. It's just a matter of stirring it together. Now don't worry about getting it too well stirred at this point because you're going to be stirring it lots for the next hour.
And there we go, it's, that's good enough for now. And what we're going to do is bring this to a boil. And once it gets to a boil, I'm going to bring the heat down a little bit and let it simmer for an hour. And you want to stir it about every 5 to 10 minutes during that hour to make sure it doesn't stick. And then we'll come back and see if it's thick enough. So I'll just bring this to a boil and simmer it for an hour, and I'll see you then. The sauce has been simmering for about 30 minutes, and I've got my water canner out. And the water canner is just a big pot you use to sterilize your jars for canning in and to boil the canned product so that it is sterilized and you can store it for a long period of time. So I filled it just up to this line on the canner. That tells you where to fill it to with water. And I've put it on the heat. But before it gets hot, I like to take the jars I'm going to use. Now, we should get about six one pint or 500 milliliter jars from that. But I always do one extra jar just in case there's some extra. And just put the jars in the rack that comes with your canner. Now, the reason I leave the water cold and put it on and do this before the water heats up is if you push that in you can put the jars in and fill them with water and turn them over without burning your hand. So we'll just put all seven jars in the canner. Now the sad part is they're going to fold up anyway as float up to the top anyway as the water boils but it gives us a bit better chance of getting them out clean. So we'll just put all seven jars in. Now we want to bring the water in the canner to a boil and let it boil for about 10 minutes to sterilize the jars. And we'll do that, like I say, during the last half hour of heating of the salsa. By turning them over, when you lift them out, the water falls out instead of you having to empty them. So there we go. They're in. I'll just put the lid on the canner and we'll let it come to a boil and I'll see you when the salsa is thickened up and finished its one hour simmer. I checked my salsa after an hour to see if it was thick enough and it was a little thin for my liking, it was a little bit too much liquid, so I gave it another 10 minutes. Now, it's really a matter of personal taste how thick you like your salsa. You can cook it really thick, but I like a little bit of liquid around my vegetables, just like that. And that's the way I like it. You can cook a little bit more if you want. But more important than the looks is the taste. Because as it cooks down, it also concentrates the flavors. So it's important you just take a taste and make sure it's the way you want it to be. Mmm. That's just perfect. Got a little hint of a nice, rich, bitter flavor from the rhubarb. Nice vinegary taste from the cider vinegar. Just enough heat from the jalapenos to give you a warm feeling in your mouth. The peppers make it just incredible. And of course, the tomato background is what makes salsa what it is. Now, this heat level is about what you would get if you bought a medium salsa in the store. You could double it up easily if you like a really hot salsa. Just put twice the amount of, pe of uh, jalapeno peppers in. If you like it milder, just put half the amount of jalapeno peppers in. But this is about medium just the way I like it. Now, my jars aren't boiling yet, so I'm just going to turn the heat off this and let it sit until they've been boiled for 10 minutes, and I'll come back and talk to you again. The salsa has thickened up as much as we want, and the water's been boiling on the jars for 10 minutes. So we're ready to take the jars out of the water canner because they're now sterilized. I'm just going to grab some oven mitts because it's going to be hot and we're going to pull them out. Now, there's two handles that stick up on the canning rack to let you just lift up and there you go. There's seven sterilized jars. Perfect. Now, do not take the water off the boil. We're going to be putting stuff back in there in a second. But now that we got the jars off, we're just going to hot. Might want to use one of the oven mitts and pull them off and stand them up. We're ready to start filling them. There we go. 
So we got the jars off. Now, a canning jar is made out of three parts. There's the jar, there's the rings that go on the top of the jar, and there's the sealing lids. Now the sealing lids can only be used once because they have a sealing compound around there. And once it's been sealed, it doesn't work again. But it works better if it's a little warm. So I like to take a little bit of water out of the canner and just throw the sealing lids in it just to warm up and it makes them seal better. So now we have our salsa, we have our jars, we've got the sealing lids. So what we're going to do is just move this like this and start filling our jars. Now just take a jar and this is what they call a sealing or excuse me a canning funnel. It's made to have a base that just fits inside a standard canning jar and you just take some of the salsa and put it through the funnel. And you fill it not quite full, just almost to the top. There we go. So, uh, overfill that a little bit. So we'll just take a spoon to take some out. And the reason you don't want to fill it quite to the top is because you want to be able to make sure there's no air bubbles that form around the side of the nice thick salsa. So we're just going to take a knife and push it around all the edges to make sure there's no air bubbles. Now you want to leave about a half inch of air space on the top. And in most canning jars they give you a ridge to show where that is. This just needs a little bit more to get to it. The reason for that air space is we're going to be putting it back into the hot boiling water in the canner to sterilize it and that causes some expansion and you need the air space to allow for it. So we'll just take one of our warmed lids, line it up on the center of it. Now you got to be careful if there's any stuff on there, Make use a paper towel to wipe it clear, but I got that one pretty clean. And screw the lid on it and just keep doing that until you've filled all the jars. Okay, I'm just finishing off the last jar here. I'm only going to get five out of this batch. How much you get out of the batch depends how much you boil it down, but five to six is sort of normal. So we'll just put the last lid on it. Again, if it was any of them on top, wipe it down with a paper towel before you seal it. Put the last one on and seal it up. So now what we're going to do is put these back in the boiling water. And take the rack and the idea is you want to boil these for 15 minutes each and that just makes sure they're sterilized. Now I live at high altitude. If you live up in the mountains like I do, give it 20 minutes because the water boils at a lower temperature. If you're any place at regular altitude, 15 minutes is fine. So we'll just take the lid off and we'll lift our rack up and just set it into the boiling water. And you want it to come back to a boil, which should just take a couple of minutes, and then let it boil for 15 minutes at regular altitude or 20 minutes at high altitude, and it will be finished canning. I'll talk to you then. So the canned salsa has been sitting in the water canner for 20 minutes at a boil. Remember, only 15 if you're at lower altitude. And now's the time to take it out. Just turn the cooktop off there and grab the two handles and lift the jars out. Now, it's important to keep them upright at this point. Don't worry if it tips over a little bit or whatever. But leave them upright and put them on the counter. The reason for that is, the way you know they're sealed is the sealer lids that you put on there will go pop and curl down instead of be popped up over the next 24 hours. If they do that, then the jar is sealed and it's fine. If it doesn't do that, you have to use it within the next couple of weeks if you keep it in the refrigerator. So there's the jars done. And we'll just set them to a side here. 
because there's always a little bit left over. I got about five and a half jars, so there's always a little bit left over, so we have some to try. And you gotta try everything you cook, it's just the way it is. So first, we're just going to try it a little bit with a spoon, just by itself, and see how it tastes. Mmm. The tomato sweet is just perfectly balanced by the vinegar and the rhubarb. You would never know there's rhubarb in here, but there's a real richness to the flavor you don't get if you don't use the rhubarb. It's got just a nice amount of pepper. This heat is not enough to cause you any pain, but definitely give you some warmth in your mouth. This is a great salsa. But I find to really try a salsa, you got to try it with a nacho chip. So let's see how it goes on a chip. Mmm, even better. Got a perfect consistency, and it goes so well with the nacho chip. I will warn you about making this, though. You might never want to buy store-bought again, but it doesn't matter because you can make it. In this episode, David made Old Fat Guy Salsa. The ingredients used were 227 grams of jalapenos, 1,500 milliliters of tomatoes peeled, cored, and diced, 1,200 milliliters of sweet peppers chopped, 500 milliliters of onions, 375 milliliters of chopped rhubarb, 500 milliliters of cider vinegar, 4 cloves of chopped garlic, 156 milliliters of tomato paste, 30 milliliters of sugar, 15 milliliters of kosher salt, 10 milliliters of paprika, and 5 milliliters of oregano. For the complete recipe, visit David's blog at oldfatguy.ca. And remember, as David would say, you can make it. It's time to make it. Just give it a try. Cause you can make it like the old fat guy. Welcome back to another episode of You Can Make It with David Farrell, the old fat guy. Today we're going to make something so simple but so delicious, sweet and spicy salmon. My wife loves salmon and I've learned a long time ago that if you make stuff your wife likes, your life goes better. So I'm going to make some sweet and spicy salmon. Now I'm going to be making this in my smoker uh, by smoking it at 200 degrees, but it works really well in an oven at 200 degrees as well. Just do everything I do in this video, but put it in your oven at 200 degrees. You just won't have that kiss of smoke to give it that bit of flavor, but it will be delicious. Now what I have here is a nice fillet of salmon. Um, you can get the little ones in pieces, or you can get a whole fillet like this. It works fine with either of those cuts of salmon. Before we put it in the smoker though, if you're going to smoke anything, you want the surface to be dry, so I'm just going to pat it down with a paper towel to get any liquid off the surface of the salmon. Now this one had been frozen, so there's a bit of liquid on it. And you'll note that underneath the salmon, I've put a piece of foil that's just sort of the shape of the salmon. Don't worry about getting it closed. The square will be fine. All that does is make it easy to take out. The salmon won't stick to the rack. If you're doing it in an oven, just put it on a baking tray and put it in. The issue normally that you don't want to put foil or rack on your salmon is the skin won't crisp up. We're cooking this low and slow, which gives a great texture, but the skin isn't going to crisp up whatever we do. So let's just take this outside and put it in the smoker. I've put the salmon in my smoker and what I'm going to do is cook it to an internal temperature of about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. That should take about an hour. And then we're going to start glazing it. So I can't tell you exactly how long it'll take because it depends on how thick your salmon fillet is. Remember you can do this in a 200 degree oven as well. But we'll just let this go ahead and cook until the internal temperature is 100 degrees Fahrenheit. I expect about an hour for this thickness of fillet. While the salmon's out smoking in my smoker, or in your oven depending how you're doing it, we're going to make up a glaze to put on the salmon later. Uh, the glaze is quite simple. It's 50 milliliters of honey. Now if your honey's a little thick, just microwave it for 30 to 40 seconds to get it nice and liquid. 
I have two milliliters or a half a teaspoon of paprika. I have four milliliters or three quarters of a teaspoon of ground ginger. And you can use between one and four milliliters or a quarter of a teaspoon to three quarters of a teaspoon of sriracha sauce, depending on how spicy you like your salmon. I've gone about in the middle to about two, two and a half milliliters of sriracha. We're also going to add 20 milliliters or four teaspoons of soy sauce. So all you got to do is put all of them in the honey. And there we go. And just mix it up. And when it's all nicely mixed up, you now have your glaze for your salmon. We'll be using this when the salmon gets to an internal temperature of 100 degrees Fahrenheit. See you then. The salmon's been smoking for about 40, 45 minutes, and it's a thin piece of fillet, so it's already up to 100 degrees Fahrenheit internal temperature. And I know that because I checked it. I got the probe which said it, and I always like to give it a second check with an instant read. There we go. So what we're going to do now is start glazing it. And all we do to glaze it is take the glaze we mixed up and give a nice generous coating over the salmon. There we go. And we're going to cook it now until the internal temperature is about 130 degrees. And that should take 20 to 30 minutes for a thin piece like this. And I'll see you then. My probe tells me we're close to 130 degrees Fahrenheit, but I always like to do a double check with my insert read thermometer. So we'll just take a little post there. And there we go. 129, 130, there we are. So it's time to give it its last glaze. So we're just going to take the glaze and give it another good brush of the glaze. And once we've got a good brush of the glaze on it, now we're going to put it in and we want that glaze to set. So what we're going to do is close the door and let it cook for 20 minutes more and then it'll be ready to eat. Our salmon was in the smoker for another 20 minutes to set the glaze. And if you have a look at it, you can see why you wanted it set. The salmon is a beautiful color, nice red, good glisten around the edges. The glaze just gives it a nice finish. Now, I really can't wait to try this, so I'm not going to say anymore. I just got to dive in because I do love a nice piece of salmon. And let's see how it tastes. Mmm. The richness of the salmon, nice touch of sweet, and just a little bit of spice because I don't like a lot. You can easily double up on the amount of sriracha I put in if you want more spice, but this is the way I like it. This is an absolutely delicious piece of sweet and spicy salmon, and of course, you can make it. In this episode, David made sweet and spicy salmon. The ingredients used were one salmon filet, 50 milliliters of honey, two milliliters of paprika, four milliliters of ground ginger, 20 milliliters of soy sauce, and one to four milliliters of sriracha sauce. For the complete recipe, visit David's blog at oldfatguy.ca. Remember, you can make it.